All right, so in this video, what I'll we'll be going over is how to conduct a chi-square test of independence in R, and then also go over how to create a couple common data visualizations to go along with such that looking at whether there's a bivariate relationship between two nominal variables. So the data set that we have to work with here Okay, we have one data frame called sex employ, and it covers some basic demographics, including sex at birth, and then whether they are full-time students, have a full-time job, and have a part-time job. So we have four nominal and or categorical variables. Okay, now conducting a chi-square test of independence in R is actually really easy. We really just need to type in ks chi-square dot test. And then we just have to input what the two variables they are separated by a comma. So I'll pull up sex employ to specify my data frame, a dollar sign, and then pick out my variable, in this case, sex at birth, add a comma, hit space, and then I'll pull up my data frame and I'll do sex and birth with full-time employment, okay, or full-time job. So... When we run that, we get our chi-square test, okay? We can see that we have our data down here. We have our chi-square squared value of 1.5, our degrees of freedom of 1, and our p-value of 0.21, okay? There's also a warning message here. Essentially, what this is getting to that is that our approximation for the chi-square statistic might not be absolutely perfect, don't worry about that with what we're looking at here, okay? Um, so, there's how you can conduct a chi-square test of independence in R. Now, the other thing we're going to want to do is we're going to be want to be able to visualize this data and be able to understand, okay, if it is or isn't significant, what is sort of the pattern of frequency distribution? Now, one way we can do that is with the table function, okay? So the table function, we essentially enter in what variables we want sort of a cross table of. So in this case, it would still be the sex employ and sex at birth, and then sex employ, and then full-time employment or full-time job, okay? Note that I separated those two variables by a comma. I can run that, and here I can see that, hey, we have 120 females that report not having full employment and eight that do, as opposed to 71 males saying no and one male saying yes. Okay, so we could use that and we could create a table. Another way to do it is to create some type of data visualization or graphic. Okay, um, a common way to do this is a grouped bar chart where we have frequencies on the y-axis. We'll do this in ggplot. Once we have ggplot up and pulled up, we can go ahead and input it. Now, the first argument in a ggplot is the name of the data frame, so in this case, sex employ. And then we need to assign aesthetics to each element. Now, when we're going to do this, we want one of our nominal variables to be the x-axis. In this case, we'll go with sex at birth and we want another to be the color of the bars okay and so we'll go with the fill color is equal to full time and job and it has to be an exact case match so we'll go ahead and we'll run that code and we can see over here the sort of base ground of the graph created now we'll add a geometric object, your geom bar. Now it's critical here. We want to specify position equals, quote, dodge. And what that does is it'll put these bars next to each other. So we can see the total count that we have here on the y-axis. We have how many females that said, no, I don't have a full-time job. How many males said, no, I don't have a full-time job and how many said yes for each respective sex. And we can see that while the overall scale of these bars is different, 
We simply have more females than males. The pattern really looks the same across each other, indicating the lack of association between these two. So, that's one way to do it. Now, we can gussy up this graph by adding a new x-axis label of frequency, which is perhaps a little more descriptive. And we can add a new, excuse me, that should be a y-axis label there. And we can go ahead and we can add a new x-axis label for, quote, sex at birth. Run that code real quick. Make sure everything renders correctly. And I'm running it using the Control-L keyboard shortcut. We have our new excuse me, control enter keyboard shortcut. We have our frequency and sex at birth labels there. Now let's go ahead and let's work on changing that label. Okay. And to do that, we need scale, fill, manual, parentheses, and then we'll want to use the argument name equals quote full time job. And so that'll allow us to rename that, except it's giving me an error because you also have to specify the colors first. So we need to specify custom colors first. So values equals, and then C for combine, and then we'll go ahead and we'll make this uh, the colors of the college that I work at. FECB00 for a sort of goldish yellow, and then hashtag 002344 for a particular shade of navy. And it is getting angry at me because I did not put a comma in right there in between these two arguments. Now let's run it. So now we have our different colors matching our institution as well as full-time job here correctly laid out there. And then you could add a theme if you want. In this case, um, let's go with theme BW. So it'll have a black and white sort of background and gray tick mark or grid lines on it. All right, now that's well and good. And we can kind of see this sort of shape of everything. Okay. However, we would like to actually sometimes see proportions and percentages as opposed to overall frequency count. And indeed, if we're looking at the pattern and not so much whether we just generally have more one versus another, sometimes that's hard to see in a bar graph like this. And what we'd really like is a stacked bar graph based upon proportions, okay? So to do that, we can go ahead and we'll need to create another ggplot. And we'll still have that first argument being the data frame we're pulling the data from. We'll still want to specify aesthetics. And those aesthetic parameters will really ultimately look the same at this point, where we want to have a fill that corresponds to our full time job and an X that corresponds to sex at birth. Let's go ahead and make sure that creates. It creates exactly how we want it. Now let's go ahead and let's add a geom underscore bar. And now we want position equals quote fill. So when we run this, what we now have is the proportion of cases here on the y-axis. Okay as opposed to the overall number. So in the prior graph, we had females being much higher in overall cases. Now this essentially will get that bar for the males equal so that we can look at how does the percentage change across these different categories. So let's go ahead and let's change our axis labels to reflect that. Okay, so xlab proportion excuse me, that should be our y-axis label. And so that should get us proportion here on our y-axis. Okay. And then we will do our x-axis label of 
sex at birth add a plus sign to add an element and then we'll go ahead and do our new uh, scale so scale fill manual where we want values that are equal to C for combine and then the HTML color codes which if you ever want an HTML color code just Google HTML color code and there's a couple websites where you basically have a color picker and you can get whatever color you need all right scale field manual we need to add another comma outside of the second parentheses and the name is going to be equal quote full time job so now when we recreate that we have the colors we want we've got all our labels how we want them and then we'll just go ahead and add a theme in this case let's go with theme dark so just to mix it up which is going to give us a dark gray background um which isn't what background I'd probably choose for this looking at it. So let's go with BW just to make it nice and pretty. BW and classic or standard ones. Regardless, here is our stacked bar graph with proportions. So you can see any proportional differences between um, the two variables. All right, I hope this helps. We've covered how to c conduct a chi square test of independence, pull the frequency data, and two types of data visualizations that you can choose between pending um, the story you want to tell about your data. All right, have a good one.